Hey everyone, my name is Benj Heish. I'm a wedding and elopement photographer based in Tacoma, Washington. And in this video, we're gonna talk about getting the most dynamic range out of your raw images using brushes and gradients, and especially the auto mask feature in Lightroom Classic. Okay, here is the photo in Lightroom. And you can see in the background with Half Dome here in Yosemite, it's really a huge discrepancy in the exposure between the background here and then the foreground. Uh, the second thing that might not be directly and immediately obvious is that the foreground here in the shade and the background also have a very, very, very different color temperature. Um, so what I was doing was trying to boost and get my exposure to be as kind of bright as I could with making sure that I had plenty of detail in the background so that I could boost my exposure originally while I was shooting it so I knew I'd have as much information as possible in the shadows here. So knowing the capabilities of your camera, knowing the general dynamic range is super important. And then looking at your histogram and kind of seeing where things are blown out and where things aren't blown out. Um, usually you can look at the back of your camera. Um, it'll give you this upper corner up here, this histogram to show you kind of where things are. Um, and where you're gonna be able to save information. Uh, a lot of times you can also either turn on like the zebra stripes or um, the highlight shadow clipping so that you can know as you're shooting it where you're gonna still have information and where you aren't. So the first thing that I like to do when I jump in here and start editing is I wanna get kind of my background and everything like that to be where I, where I want it, where I think that um, I'm gonna start, you know, getting a final image because I wanna know what the preset does to the image before I start editing the rest. So for me, I use, I have my own presets, they're called Cascade. Uh, I've made them specifically for wedding photographers. I'm not gonna annoy you and go into a ton of detail about them, but they have, I have presets for just all types of um, things you're gonna run into on a wedding day. Um, so for me, I'm gonna use number 303, Cascade Dark Warm. Um, I tried to label them so they're easy to understand what's, what's good here. So I want this image to be warm. I want it to have a little bit of contrast. So I've kind of made 03 to emulate something similar to maybe Portrait 160 uh, push to stop. So it's gonna be a little bit more gritty. It's gonna have a little bit more contrast and it's gonna be a little bit warmer for me. I do that in the, uh, the shadows. So. Here we go, we're gonna click there. And that is what our photo looks like. Um, we're also going to bring the highlights down. Um, and so a lot of people would just say, hey, why don't you just shoot it with the exposure all the way up? And here's my answer. So if I properly expose them at a little over two stops <laughs> of an exposure boost, this is with the highlights all the way down already and we have zero, barely any, you can't even see the top of Half Dome right here. And there's no sky, no nothing. And especially once you boost that up, you can see the difference in the color temperature between them here in the foreground and then the background. We would need to move this up to maybe like 8,000 8, or 10,000 even in temperature to make sure that this is gonna work out really well. Um, and then this, this entire image is gonna be blown out. You're not gonna have anything. So here is where having this photo mask is a really, really amazing. So um, we're gonna go down here. I think originally my exposure was a little bit low. Um, so we're gonna boost that up about a third of a stop, 0 0.4, 0 0.35, something like that. Um, just so we're gonna get our background looking pretty good here. So I think just with that slight difference, Half dome, my original exposure, what I'm looking for here is gonna be good to go. Um, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in here to the gradient filter. You can also hit M if you'd like for the quick key. Um, and I've already kind of adjusted these things, but we're gonna move the temperature up because we're gonna be masking just this foreground area and these two people. So we're gonna move our temperature up about 50. We're gonna move our tint up by about 10, and that's something we can just check and see if um, you know it's gonna work out or not. And then we're gonna move our exposure up by a stop and a third, so 1.35. We'll just kind of see how that looks, and we'll adjust it from there. So um, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we get all of them in this first thing, and we can kind of move it up. Yeah, so I think that looks pretty good. I think the thing that I'm gonna to need to do is add a little bit in the shadows. So maybe like 25. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The only thing is 
Now her hair and his pants are a little bit uh, flat for me. So I'm just gonna drop this down to negative 10, add a little more contrast. Okay, so now um, this image, at least for me, in the foreground is looking really good. This is what I want out of an exposure. The background now, obviously we've blown it out, but that's what we're gonna use our brushing and especially the range mask and then the auto mask to kind of work and play with here. So um, to me, this looks good. It's nice and warm. It's gonna match that warm background, um, but there's gonna be, you know, not uh, just an overly warm image on the whole thing. We're gonna kind of even balance things out a little bit by doing this. Okay, so that looks good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click down here in the left-hand corner to show selected mask overlay. This is gonna show us exactly where the mask is. You can see it starts to gradient up there. Um, so it's gonna you know, envelop all this stuff and sort of fade out up there. Um, so now what we're gonna do though is we're gonna jump down or jump over to range mask. We're gonna click that. You have the difference of color or luminance. Um, for me, because there's such a difference in luminance, AKA like the exposure and overall brightness of the two things. Um, that's what I'm gonna use because Lightroom is gonna be able to have a lot of information because the exposures are so different. So I'm gonna click here to use the luminance range. And so it starts out just at a normal range. So we're gonna take this high range and start moving it down. And as we do that, we can see up, you know, in the sky, that's starting to disappear. Um, and we're gonna kind of keep moving down until we get to a spot where um, it starts moving into our subjects, where, which it's hard to see, but you can see as you kind of zoom in in their faces, which look incredibly creepy right now. So I'm sorry, uh, guys, if you're watching this, but um, we're gonna have to move that up a little bit because we want it still to be fully filled in around their faces. Yeah, there we go. So. I didn't check this, but about 60, maybe 55 is about where we want to be here. We'll go up to 60 because it's easier to take more out on the other side than otherwise. But the nice thing is we've kind of cleared it out of the highlights here. Um, and we've got it really, really prominent here. And it's a little bit less in the other spots now that we've kind of moved that range mask down. So in doing that, we can kind of check and see what even just doing that mask did to our image. Um, and if we go into history here, we can see that just by um, adding this range mask, we moved it from here to here by using the luminance section. So here it is before the filter. Here it is after the filter. And then here it is by just doing the luminance range mask. So ultimately that already looks pretty good, but that background, the trees, they look very, very warm. Uh, there's not a lot of detail back there. And so we can go a step further in this whole process by jumping back into this um, graduated filter. And what we can do is move from, there's new, there's, there's edit the current one, and then there's brush. So we're gonna click brush, and then we're gonna click erase. So what we're gonna do is start erasing out all of this extra information um, that we really don't need here. So I'm gonna turn auto mask off for now because we're just gonna do the big stuff. So we're gonna take this brush here and just get rid of all the excess stuff that we don't need from this uh, gradient graduated filter. So we're gonna get rid of all this junk, but we're gonna keep um, a little bit of buffer space in between our subjects and in between um, these plants over here and in between the rocks. And you could just roll through and start doing um, the auto mask first, but there is gonna be some times and you'll probably end up seeing it here while we jump into some of the shadows where um, Lightroom will assume that I wanna keep um, some of that mask in different sections and where I don't want it to keep it. Um, so it's best to kind of get an overall erasing done first. Okay, now that we've done that, we're gonna jump over here um, in this brush section where you can change all your stuff. We're gonna click auto mask. And what that's gonna do is, it's again working on luminance. And so all of these really, really pronounced areas of contrast and um, difference between light and dark, we're gonna be able to brush right across there without going into every little crevice. And Lightroom's gonna know because of our specifications where to keep and where to get rid of. 
So it's not really that difficult. We just kind of go right along those edges of like heavy contrast. And Lightroom's gonna know and do a really good job for the most part of jumping in there. So you'll be able to see it, especially in these plants right here. Um, I know that it kind of overdid it, that spot right there, but this would be like an impossible thing to have to go in every little crevice without any auto masking. Um, but you'll be able to see, we'll be able to kind of just paint right through. And it's gonna do a real, real good job of just kind of jumping in and doing all that little intricate work for you so that you don't have to be doing every single little thing. So we're just gonna keep brushing through here. Same concept applies. Just kind of cruise over. All right, so now that all that little brush work is done, things aren't perfect, but here it is before. And then here it is after. So for me, this ends up just looking like a much more balanced image. There's a couple of things I would fix if I was a little bit more particular, but um, this looks pretty good for now. So let me know if you have any questions about this in the comment section below. Uh, if you like videos like this and you have more suggestions of stuff that you would like me to do, let me know in the comments as well. I'll try to start doing videos like this more often. Um, subscribe, hit the like button if it was helpful, and uh, yeah, see you in the next one.